What's going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams. As always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? And LaVon Maynard. Hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. What's going on, everybody? It's another great week. Uh, definitely continue to tune in. Monday and Tuesday are topics. Wednesday's discussions. Uh, Thursday, sometimes we have an Ask Us SP where we talk to people who are trying to break into cyber. And then Fridays, we talk about everything else about the weekly rundown. Uh, a little disclaimer up front. So you'll be hearing these episodes from the 21st through the 25th. However, there will be no 28 through uh, 1 April um, episodes. Uh, I got to go out of town. I can't record the, uh, the the normal sessions that we normally do. So we'll have one week hiatus. But I just want to make sure everybody's tracking so that way you don't unsubscribe. <laughs> Actually, subscribe <laughs> twice as much. All right. So that way you, <laughs> when we come back, you'll get the notifications. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. But uh, without further ado, I'll give it to Levon. Yes, sir. This week we have, a, we have an article from uh, Info Security Magazine. This was from uh, Phil Muncaster. Uh, this was for a Clearview AI helping the Ukrainian war effort. So essentially this is uh, a controversial tech company called Clearview AI. Um, and they're reportedly offering its facial recognition capabilities in Ukraine, to the Ukrainian government to help with the war effort. And this, this AI vendor has been effectively banned in several Western countries for breaking uh, data protection laws, offering, because uh, uh, it offers a powerful search engine to help identify persons of interest via their facial characteristics. Um, it looks like the CEO's name is Hoan uh, Hoan uh, Ton Bat, and um, you know it's, it, the the article says that it remains unclear that what Ukraine is using the technology for. But um, they sent a letter to the government uh, and said it can be used for various uh, scenarios, and some of the scenarios include uh, vetting individuals at interest of interest at checkpoints, identifying the dead, reuniting refugees separated from their families, and helping and even helping to debunk. Russian disinformation efforts on social media. Um, and it says that the, the CEO says that the firm has over 2 billion images taken from Russian social media service, uh, which is pronounced, uh, well, I don't know the pronounce, but it's, it's spelled V-K-O-N-T-A-K-T-E. So, when contact, yeah, when, when contact, okay. Yeah, I was like, is, is he going to go for it? Because I'm Yeah, not. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try. Yeah, I'm trying, <laughs> but it's a VK, the VK uh, social media website at the, that Russia's running. Um, but they, they I guess they pulled billions of images off of that, which is pretty interesting. Um, but they said that they're not offering the technology to Moscow, so they're keeping it with Ukraine. Um, it looks like uh, looks like the Manhattan-based software firm has a vast collection of 10 billion facial images, which it, which it allows law enforcement and other customers to query. Um, let's see, and and it, the article kind of goes into. Um, you know, the, the questionable nature of these, these, this company as far as the, the Clearview technology. Uh, it looks like even Google, Meta, and Twitter have issued cease and desist orders to the firm to prevent it from scraping more user images from their platforms and uh, contravention of those, I'm sorry, of their applicable uh, use policies. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of controversial um, that they are, you know, they have these images available and they could be used for identifying, identifying individuals. And obviously, as, as I mentioned, that they're not really uh, being used in the US. They've kind of been blocked because of these, uh, these practices. And uh, obviously, it, it goes into people's, uh, you know, people's protection and personal rights of, of not having their images uh, or the, the identity or the facial structures and everything like that used to identify them while they're walking around. And, um, but it's like, you know, I, I think, I know Shannon has some thoughts on this before, but you know, it's, it's kind of used to potentially capture people of, of interest that may be like terrorists or something like that. But at the same time, people are, are concerned about their own personal uh, well-being and their, pri their privacy being maintained so they can walk in the streets without being identified and, and, and you know, tracked. Because uh, there's a thing with, you know, big government. People don't want to have big government and uh, big brother like watching them as they're moving around. But uh, I'll turn this over to uh, Shan. I think you have some thoughts on this one. So, so I do. Um, it's because I'm the Patriot Act, Patriot Act guy, right? Like I don't mind, but I don't know. I'm starting to, I'm, I'm starting to, 
I don't want to say change my mind a little bit, but some of the stuff we're going to see, and you guys should stay tuned to later in the week, okay? A little bit of foreshadowing, some stuff that might come up to where this, this is probably being used, right? And like you mentioned, the reason you're not seeing it in the U.S., right, is because of the people that, that the companies that did a cease and desist order on them, right? And it was Google, Meta, and Twitter. Where, where are all of our pictures at nowadays, right, in America, right? Google, Meta, and Twitter, right? That's what you Right, all these mm-hmm. pictures that they're going to, to find all these people, right? Um, and they had a cease and desist order on them um, to not use it anymore. But um, another place they got in trouble is is uh, over in Europe, right? Uh, the UK yeah. actually hit them with a fine of seventeen million pounds, which, which was twenty two. Let me see if I can find here twenty two point six million dollars, right, from the Information Commissioner's Office um, for alleged serious breaches of the GDPR. We bought the GDPR before, right? Like with what they do over in the EU um, when it comes to privacy and, and some of the reasons, well, eight of the things that they have on here uh, for data subject privacy rights that they do in the GDPR. This is kind of this is kind of what they were not following, and this is how they got caught up, right? So the eight rules they have is the right to be informed, the right of access, the right to rectification, the right to erasure, right? So to have your stuff erased if need be, which this company was not following the right to restrict processing, the right to data portability, the right to object, right? Which are not giving people the right to object. They're just taking your your, your, uh, photos, right? And using them for this purpose. And the rights in relation to automated decision-making and profiling. So this is why they got hit with that fine, right? Because Clearview AI is actually an American company, right? But even though they're in America, this doesn't stop them from operating all over the globe or what they do. But uh, yeah, this was this is one of those things. It's just like, man, I, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm kind of, I, I I get what they're trying to do by helping Ukraine, right? Like it's it's almost universally recognized um, that Russia is in the wrong here, right? So them wanting to help Ukraine, I don't have a problem with, but they've already been slapped before, right? They got a twenty two point six million dollar fine. They got hit with, and I had to look this up. I think it was twenty twenty one. I think it was just last year, actually. Mm-hmm. I think it was like November of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 30 November 2021. Yeah, they got fined 22.6 million. So it wasn't that long ago even. But yeah, this is one of those things where it gets tricky. It gets to be a, sli- a slippery slope. And it's like, uh, again, I, I, I do want those Terry's caught. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This can help, but. Um, We also have to think about like when it comes to facial recognition technology, and this may not be something that's really affecting it over there um, in the Ukraine and Moscow, but remember that when it comes to people of color, right, there's, there's a little bit of, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, what do you call it, a larger bias, larger bias, say, let's go with that larger bias, right, like it's not as accurate as it is with people that are, that are not of color when it comes to facial recognition. So, um, but again, I don't know if you have that problem as much. And I'm not saying it's hundred percent, you don't have people of color over there in the Ukraine because there are some refugees over there that are of color, right? But you have to be careful with that as well, right? So if you're using this technology, you could have somebody, you could be hemming somebody up that you don't need to, right? There could be a black, you think you got a black Russian and you don't, you know what I'm saying? But Ryan, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think you two uh, definitely hit it, uh, hit the nail right on the head. Um, yeah, the, there is a bias. So I, I mean, it's kind of like, well, it won't really impact us that much, right? But it could because there's a larger margin of error, error because of it. Because um, yeah, they have students, they have refugees over there. Um, they have people who are, who are, you know, in industry and business as well. Um, I, 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 it's it's weird, right? I'm the I'm the the the, uh, the techie guy, but the politician in me is like. Mm, Again, we have we have these these uh, third parties aiding in war and conflict, right? Like, because I'm all like, I am definitely like, I'm glad they're helping them out. I'm glad they're on the, the right the right side of this, um, in, in my personal opinion. Um, but they're banned from the West for for a reason, like you said. Like the the, the companies with the most images and private information are like, mm, we don't know about them. That's a red flag. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then, like you said, where are they getting this data from? So, like these these uh, billions of images are coming from social media, um, and then with the GDPR, they're in, in direct violation because no one's opting in. Because uh, I, I read a different article that said that they were using it for um, uh, recognition of the dead, so that people can identify, um, you know, if their loved ones were uh, were were killed in a conflict. Um, and it's highly accurate. They said that you don't even need the like. It's pretty morbid, right? But you don't need the the entire person's. Um, uh, face to be able to um, to identify who they are. So it's pretty powerful, pretty powerful tech. 
um, being involved. But where do those images come from? That's the that's the the the, the crux of the issue. And then are are they being used to target? Um, like uh, the Ukraine has been hitting some really high profile people uh, in in this um, this conflict. Like, it, is this technology being used to target um, the the enemy and identify those people who are VIPs? Uh, again, it's war, right? So, like, technology evolves, is used, and what have you. But this is a a U.S. based company, and and are they sanctioned? Like, will they be okay once the dust settles? That's the question I always have, right? When it comes to that, uh, the the hackers that are helping now, the uh, the private companies that are helping, like, will you be okay? once there's a peace treaty or whatever happens like are they going to come for you uh, being a war criminal who's to say like is it like all this technology and stuff hasn't been used before at least not to this degree so i don't know i, I think it'd be interesting in the future like they start extraditing people <laughs> you know what i mean for war crimes and they didn't even set foot on the battlefield so we, we'll see i guess there's more to come what, what you're saying right now is kind of in line with the discussion two weeks ago, right? When it came to Elon Musk and Starlink, it was the same thing, right? Like he's a, he's a, he runs a private company that was out there trying to help. Where, where does that, where's that line? Yeah. Once, once it's all said and done, people start to make agreements and what have you, like some of that stuff will be retroactive. Like, well, this wasn't okay. And you'd be like, well, I didn't know it wasn't okay, but uh, you know, that's not the way the rules work, unfortunately. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm all, I'm all about technology, but it's, it's, the evolution is happening a little bit quicker and uh, a little bit scarier than than we uh, initially thought. Like we don't know what they're using the technology for. Like they're collecting those images, and then what will they be used for in the future? Like just because they're on on the right side this time, who's to say they won't be on? Like they're like Moscow, like yeah, that technology really hampered us. We should hire them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like pull them to our side. We'll pay them more. Like I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the future holds. But. With that being said, I, I thought this was a, a really good episode. I never say it's a bad episode for those who are listening. <laughs> Whenever we close the episode, that was a really good episode. I never like, man, that was terrible. <laughs> so I, because yeah, it never, never because it never has been. That's why. <laughs> right, right. Because it never has. Flawless. Been. Right. Yeah. Flawless. Flawless, flawless victory. victory. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely continue to uh, the tune in. Again, Monday and Tuesday are topics, Wednesday's discussion. So this is a foreshadowing of a discussion that we're going to have later on to do with uh, with technology and uh, imagery. Um, no ask us SP this week. Definitely a good uh, the weekly rundown on Friday if that's if, if that's also something you listen to. Um, but just continue to tune in. Like I said, subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. Hit a bell if a bell's involved. And we will be here throughout the week. And then next week we're taking a, a small break. So uh, hit up our social medias. All the same names that the podcast is called, as well as you give me a personally. I'm at Ryry Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy on LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, and Clubhouse and Yulevon. You can be up on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. Stay safe, stay secure. Take care.